In this video, we're going to want to continue on where we left off with our vector curve, except I want to do something slightly different just for testing. So one thing you're going to want to do is make sure you actually include curves, curve vector.h in your anim instance.cpp, so that way we can have access to the required functions that we need. So inside of native update animation, what I want to do instead is I'm just going to comment out the call and simply call the function just for testing sake. So even if we're not moving, we can see the result. And then later on, we are going to want to pass some parameters into this, such as our character speed, for example. So that way we can control how aggressive the curve is based upon how much you're moving or how fast you're moving. So if we go back down to move vector curve, as you can see, we can have a couple results from it. So vector curve, you have the float curves, doesn't really matter, get curves, and get vector value, which is the one we want. So we're going to want to pretty much have, let me find the graph, here it is. We want to, for the most part, let me move this back down as well, to zero, it follow. So let's say we start, we want to make it so it kind of tracks along this curve and get a value from it. So that's going to kind of be our vector position. So we can see that it returns a vector. So float in time. So this will be at the time that the graph has gone. So for example, if we are 30, we would be right here. If we're at what would that be? 45. It would be right here, and so on. So that would kind of dictate where we are in the graph. So what we're going to use is I'm going to use the character, and I want to get the lifetime based on it. So get that would be the get game time since creation. So get number of seconds in game time since this actor was created as my value. So f vector. Let's do new value, or new vec, better. And that should be at kind of whatever point we are at on the graph. So now I just want to kind of interpolate to that value. And since we are constantly calling move vector curve, that's not really a problem. So f vector, uh, let's call this one interpt vec equals u kismet math library. Search for interp and v interp2 so it takes in our current vector the target the target's going to be our new vec then delta time and interpolation speed so we are currently using let's look at our animation blueprint real quick in the anim graph we are using this vb site bone that is run off of our site transform so we want to modify the site transform so that's going to be our well, we have to use the location for it. So site transform dot get location and new vec. And then we want to get the delta seconds. So I'm just going to go ahead and pass that in as a parameter. The float delta seconds. And then the scale, which I always have just been doing 10 and we should be good to go. So now we just got to pass in delta seconds when we call it. So pass in delta seconds and we are good. So back here, what we want to do is we want to set that value. So site transform dot set or set location. We want to use interpt vec. Uh, let's see. Actually, we might have a slight problem here with relativity. Eh, it might be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and compile this and see how badly I screwed up because I feel like I made a mistake here. But at the same time, it should, it should be okay. I don't think rotation and all that kind of stuff is going to come into play and mess with it. But I could be wrong. So we are constantly altering... transform so let's see all right so I try to aim and it goes straight down so my guess because value might be so low out of curiosity we can actually probably test this by cranking 
this up. Let's go up to something high, like 100. Save it. So now when I aim, it's up a lot higher. So yeah, there is a problem there. We are going to have to go and make it relative. So let's control Z and bring that back down. I think that's pretty much where it was. And we're going to leave it there. So we have to make some changes. Let's close this. And that, wait, no, actually, we are modifying it directly. So we're kind of replacing this, Oops. which could lead us to a problem. So that itself is not correct. So, as this says, you can see it's replacing it. We don't want to necessarily replace it because if, for example, uh, let me go back to the curve again. If we are at, I don't know, let's say whatever time this is, seven point something something. Well, that's going to put it at zero for the, uh, the Z axis. That's kind of a problem, because if we replace the existing transform with Z as the zero, well, Z as zero, well, that's going to put our cells pretty much straight down. That's, that's not right at all. So we want to, instead of replacing, we want to add to it. So what we're going to do is let's drag this over, have another transform bone, plug everything back up. We can remove the rotation since we're only modifying the location, but let's set it to add to existing instead. Should be fine as component space. And then we have to get another transform that we will use instead. So we're, that way we're not kind of replacing this one. So we want to keep this. As you can see, if I set the translation to zero when I aim, it goes straight down. Actually, I forgot I'm setting this one, so let me comment that out so we can actually see it in effect. So when I aim, because we're adding to it, we're not doing anything. We're adding nothing. So if I were to decrease this by, actually, let's increase it by 30. You can see it bumps it up. So we also want to make sure we plug in aiming alpha to it. I forgot to do that. So we aim, and it goes way up. And then let's set it to zero. We aim, it goes to the same height that it would normally. So we're just having some issue with the rotation. That's because we still have, even though we removed the pin, we still have it set through rotation mode to uh, replace existing. Set that to ignore. I forgot to do that. So as you can see, it's completely normal. If I bump this up again, I'll just, I only do 10 this time. So 10 centimeters, it goes up. So that's how you can kind of see it's going to influence the value. So now that I think about it, we're going to have a value of five. So if we increase this all the way by five, we are at too big of a value. So I'd probably consider setting this at the value of the max we want it to be. And then using our uh, actual character speed between a range of zero and like 600 to interpolate, or not interpolate, but find a normalized value to multiply the end result with. So that way, as we're moving slow, we're gonna have a very slow amount of sway or a very small amount of sway. But as we go faster, we're gonna have a much greater amount of sway. So that's how that's gonna work. So we have to find or create a trans or a vector here that's going to modify the bone. So we want to do instead, we can remove this. We want to have pretty much store this. So this is going to be our sway vector. So F vector. Let's just call it sway vector. Or yeah. Sway location, better yet, because it is the location. So sway location equals that value. So let's go ahead and relaunch. Don't really care to use the debugger. Okay, relaunch the assets. And we're going to grab, what was it, sway location. 
and plug that into the translation here. Let's move this over and just clean it up a tiny bit and see the result. So we aim. Okay, so that's going way up. So let's try to print out this value here so we can see roughly what it is. Uh, I don't know, value, percent F. And we're going to grab the sway location dot Z and see what that gives us. So we're getting a value of 140. That is not quite correct. And it's slowly dropping. So let's see what it just started out with started out with so we went from zero where we were ever so slightly decreasing and then we spiked up that is not correct so the targets can be the new vector so it should be our vector curve that we have set And I'm an idiot. I'm still using our site transform. So let me grab the sway location. And we're going to pass that in as our current instead. Now let's go ahead and re-use uh, our live coding. Check it out. There, that's kind of better. So as you can see, we are slowly going back down. And then we should be going back up once it hits negative 5. So right about now... We start going right back up. And you can kind of see how this sway is going to work. And it's all the same between all the optics. So, obviously, we have too big of a range. And on top of that, it's way too slow. So what we're going to do is, because it's taking so long to move between points, well, for starters, let's actually check out the... Uh, Let's try to figure out a max of what we want it to be. So I'm going to disconnect that, and let's do 2. If I aim, and I'm at 2, that's a good bit too far. I'm going to disconnect that. Let's try 1. And of course it stops aiming for me. Oops, got to compile. Oh, yeah, that breaks the animation. So that's at 1. That's too big. Let's do 0 .0 0 0.8. <clears throat> Alright. That I could see. Let's drop it down a little bit farther to 0 0.65, I guess. And I'd say that's probably pretty good. So let's try negative. Let's see where that lands us on the top. I'd say that's okay. So... We'll have negative 0 0.65, and that'll be pretty decent on the uh, for the height. So we're going to select it all, transform tool. We're going to lower this to, so we can just see the upper bounce of 0 0.65 and negative 0 0.65, like so. That back to zero and now we want to crunch it in so we're going to drag it like so and let's just let's try something like negative three and three and see where that gets us so that's kind of okay that's still a little bit too much my guess that's regarding the possibly the interpolation are we at now we're at negative 1 and 1. So we want to go to 0 0.65 and negative 0 0.65. That's why. And save it. So there's kind of our value for vertical. Okay, not bad. Uh, we could we also, we could actually control the interpolation speed based on movement as well. So that's probably something we'll end up doing. But we now have the basic setup. And that's mostly what I wanted. So what we're going to do next, well, in the next video, 
is we're going to continue this and add on our y axis as well to give the left to right sway and then we're going to start altering it based upon the speed at which we are moving so we're going to have the amount and the speed at which it changes based upon our movement speed so that's going to be it for this video <clears throat> If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patreons, as well as you get early access to my videos. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. See you in the next one.